In this video, I will introduce the uh, Chook converter, which is another bug boost type DC DC converter. Uh, this was invented by Professor Chook while at Caltech, and so it is named after him. Uh, in this video, we will be able to complete the steady state analysis um, and the design and simulation of the Chook converter we will take up in subsequent videos. The Chook converter is uh, capable of uh, both stepping up and stepping down the uh, the voltage and therefore the current, meaning the output voltage can be um, either higher or lower than the input voltage depending on the application and uh, depending on the operating condition. And uh, this is controlled by controlling the UD ratio of the single switch in the switch in the Chook converter. Now, uh, a main advantage of Chook converter is that it combines the uh, good characteristics of both the buck converter and the boost converter. So if you recall, the buck converter has uh, a smooth uh, output current to the capacitor load combination, whereas the input current of a buck converter is, uh, is pulsating. Uh, whereas if you look at the boost converter, its input current is that of an inductor current, and therefore that is smooth, whereas its output current that goes into the capacitor load combination that is a pulsating current requiring a very large uh, capacitor. Now the Chook converter, um, both at the input side as well as the output side, uh, results in um, smooth currents, uh, meaning both at the input and the output, they are inductor currents, therefore smooth. So that, so in that sense, it combines the advantages of buck and the boost, uh, mainly in terms of the, the filters. Now, similar to the basic bug boost converter that we have studied earlier, uh, Chook converter also uh, produces a negative output voltage, meaning the output voltage with respect to the same input ground has a negative value. One of the differences in the operation of a Chook converter is that the energy transfer from the input to the output happens through a coupling capacitor. So this is a feature that um, the Chook converter shares with another bug boost uh, converter called the SEPI converter, which we'll be learning later. Um, the Chook converter also, when we uh, learn about uh, control design, uh, we'll see that um, it, it requires uh, a more complex controller compared to the other basic um, non-isolated DC-DC converters. So here is the uh, schematic of the Chook converter. Um, as you can see, it has uh, two inductors, uh, the input side and the output side, uh, a single switch and a single diode. Uh, here is the output capacitor, and this is called as the coupling capacitor. Uh, as I mentioned, in a Chook converter, the energy transfer from the input to the output is facilitated by this uh, coupling capacitor. Now, the uh, CC, or the coupling capacitor, um, is... Uh, during analysis, we can assume it to be large enough so that the voltage across the coupling capacitor VCC can be assumed to be a smooth DC. Now, uh, it is not as large as the um, output capacitor because the output voltage by specification needs to have a very low ripple, whereas the um, coupling capacitor, its voltage is an internal variable, so we don't really care much about the voltage ripple. So it, it does have a relatively higher uh, high frequency ripple than the output voltage, uh, but it is predominantly a DC voltage with a slightly uh, larger ripple. Um, the voltage polarity, this will come through our analysis later, uh, but I just wanted to highlight that its voltage polarity is positive on this side. Um, and uh, as seen, the inductors on, on at the input as well as the output side uh, ensure that the currents, the both the input current and the output current, are non-pulsating current, uh, which would mean the input current is smooth and the output capacitor requirement is uh, is small. Then, um, in order to help us in our uh, steady state analysis, um, as well as to um, uh, kind of derive the Chook converter from the uh, cascade connection of a boost converter followed by a buck converter. Um, let's look at the equivalent circuits of a Chook converter valid in the on and the off interval. So this is the equivalent circuit when the switch is on and uh, we'll see that 
uh, when the switch is on the diode gets reverse biased in uh, just like in uh, most other DC DC converters in this case the diode is reverse biased by the large voltage uh, VCC so when the switch is on this uh, this this uh, this part is a short circuit by the switch and uh, the current through the inductor rises um, and uh, that flows through this switch at the same time the um, capacitor due to its stored uh, energy from the previous uh, cycle uh, is also fed to the um, to the load and um, uh, also goes to increase the uh, stored energy in the inductor uh, but the key point is that current flows through the same switch S1 through in this path okay. um, similarly this is the um, uh, equivalent circuit when the switch is turned off so this is the switch off interval um, during this time the um, current through the um, uh, inductor L2 as well as the current um, IL1 in the inductor L1 they force the diode D1 to, to conduct so that is this short circuit here switch is open so this is open circuited so here both the inductor current as well as the uh, uh, inductor current IL1 as well as IL2 they both flow through the diode and uh, in the process the um, IL1 charges the coupling capacitor okay? uh, and the IL2 flows through the output capacitor and the load. Uh, also notice that in uh, both the equivalent circuits the uh, current flowing through the capacitor and the load is from the bottom to the top uh, in as well as in the off interval uh, so therefore the uh, output voltage polarity is positive at the bottom and uh, negative at the top so i mentioned the uh, um, the cascaded connection of a boost converter followed by a buck converter uh, in the previous slide uh, it may be a good idea to actually um, uh, briefly look at this cascaded connection uh, this will uh, give us a better intuitive understanding of uh, how a chuck converter works uh, and in fact this may be uh, how the chuck converter uh, was actually uh, derived okay. so so this is the cascaded connection uh, you can clearly see the uh, boost stage at the input side uh, this switch and this diode uh, and the lnc forming the boost converter uh, so the vcc would be higher than the input voltage v the uh, second stage is uh, clearly the buck stage uh, with the VCC as the input and the final output is the output of the buck stage. Now um, clearly the, there are two switches and they can be independently controlled. Okay? Um, but, but in this context where we are actually trying to compare this with the Chuck converter uh, which actually combines um, um, these two switches into a single switch. Uh, the two diodes to a single diode so so in that context let's uh, consider the case where both the switches are operated they are controlled by the same switching function uh, q okay. both have the same they turn on and off uh, exactly at the same instance uh, and the average of the q is the duty ratio therefore both the switches have the same duty ratio okay. so with this uh, uh, control the Chuck converter is uh, is very similar um, uh, in structure as well as uh, in um, operation and performance to this uh, cascaded uh, topology. Uh, the key difference being instead of two switches, uh, uh, there is only one switch, which is a big advantage. Similarly, instead of two diodes, there is only a single diode. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Chuck converter realizes the same functionality uh, and the same performance uh, as as that of the um, the cascaded uh, topology but using a single switch okay. the uh, drawback uh, may not be a drawback for all the applications but maybe uh, a drawback for certain applications is that the chuck converter results in a negative output the um, uh, uh, we will see that uh, with respect to the input ground the output is really uh, is negative uh, in, in, in the case of chuck now going back to the uh, cascaded boost buck connection um, so the input stage is the boost so for a boost the V O over V N is uh, 1 over 1 minus D therefore V C C which is really the output of the boost stage is uh, input V N over 1 minus D so this is going to be higher than input voltage for any value of uh, D the second stage is a buck 
and its input is is this VCC and for a buck the output is D times V in this case the input is VCC so the final output voltage is D times VCC now if we combine these two substitute for VCC this expression uh, we get output voltage is D over 1 minus D times the input or VO over VN is uh, D over 1 minus D okay. so that is the buck boost relationship for D greater than 0.5 it is boost D less than 0.5 it is a uh, it is step down buck and uh, as you would expect uh, when we derive the input output relationship for a juke for a chuck converter this is exactly what we will get okay so the similarity between the uh, cascaded boost uh, buck configuration to that of a chuck converter will become um, uh, quite obvious when we consider the equivalent circuits of both the uh, both the configurations during the on and the off interval uh, so uh, what is drawn here is the equivalent circuit so this is the on interval equivalent circuit of this cascaded configuration uh, when the switch is on meaning both s1 and s2 both of them are on simultaneously in this interval uh, so this is the short corresponding to s1 and uh, s2 is, uh, was here okay and both d1 and d2 are off uh, and um, they, they're not they do not appear in the on interval uh, similarly during the off interval uh, s1 and s2 are off and both the diodes are conducting uh, and this is the resulting equivalent circuit so this is where the diode is, uh, the short corresponds to the diode d2 and the d1 short is uh, somewhere here okay. so now what what i want to do is to compare uh, both these equivalent circuits with that of the um, of the chuck converter which we have already seen in a, in a previous slide so here are the uh, so here is the on interval equivalent circuit for the chuck converter and let's compare these two okay. so the um, electric current uh, sees uh, the voltage v in applied across it and its current rises that's exactly what happens here okay. now in the uh, cascaded connection this uh, this capacitor you can call it as a coupling capacitor again um, that uh, discharges uh, through this inductive current il2 feeding the load same thing happens here but it happens through the same switch s1 in the case of the chuck converter uh, but uh, regardless uh, it is uh, being discharged by the same uh, il2 as in the um, cascaded arrangement so if you, uh, if you can see the on interval they are almost identical okay. um, and let's look at the off interval again uh, so during this period the um, this capacitor vcc is uh, so let's look at the cascaded connection first so during this interval the capacitor cc is being charged by il1 uh, whereas il2 is uh, it's it's free wheeling through this diode and it is um, giving part of its energy to the output capacitor load combination so almost identical thing happens in the chuck as well uh, the capacitor vcc is being charged by il1 as in the uh, other case and uh, simultaneously the il2 is uh, is again freewheeling and uh, releasing some of its energy to the um, output capacitor load combination so the conceptually uh, from an operation point of view they are identical uh, except that uh, as you can see the uh, this il2 charges the capacitor post um, uh, it makes it positive at the bottom so with respect to the uh, input ground we get a negative output voltage so that's the only difference the final slide about the similarity between the cascaded uh, configuration and the chuck converter so we've seen uh, uh, from an operation point of view they are very similar now let's see how we can go from this topology to the to the chuck converter so essentially what is shown in this um, uh, shaded box uh, the switch and the diode and the capacitor that uh, connection can be replaced simply by the capacitor coupling capacitor with the polarity as shown here and uh, the second change that is needed is the output stage we saw that um, chuck really results in a negative output voltage and uh, we need to replace this uh, we just need to flip it vertically and to get this configuration and um, uh, in order to um, uh, combine the input ground and the output ground we can move this inductor to the top uh, as shown here okay. 
So with these two changes, the um, this network being replaced by the coupling capacitor and uh, just flipping this vertically results in the uh, the choke converter. Okay. So so when we did this uh, step, we removed this extra switch and the extra diode. So we are left with only one switch S1 and um, the diode, uh, this should really be, this should have been really called as D2 and this is D1, but D2 has been uh, removed, uh, sorry, D2 has been retained and that is called as D1, whereas this diode has been, um, um, uh, has been eliminated. Okay. So that is the complete chip converter. Um, okay, so we are past the 15 minute mark. So I will um, cover the remaining uh, steady state analysis of chip converter in uh, part two of the uh, chip converter analysis uh, series.